Hello Seekers, uh, welcome to the 7th video of the blockchain series. Uh, in the last few videos, uh, uh, we tried to prove the security of blockchain uh, from a mathematical standpoint. And to do that, what we did was uh, we took a blockchain um, and divided that into uh, two parts. Uh, the first I block and, and the second Z block. And uh, the scenario we tried to uh, uh, simulate was what if a node tries to rebuild a particular block, which is the i block, basically tries to rebuild because this is where it has a transaction that it has given to another party, and it tries to get rid of that transaction uh, by rebuilding that and rebuilding the i block, and uh, it's and also all the subsequent blocks plus one additional block, so that it it ends up building the longest chain in the network that will be the truth and, and every other node will be able to uh, uh, sync up with that, right? Now, uh, what is the probability of a node uh, being able to accomplish that? And that, that's what we uh, uh, we called it as WI. And, uh, and, and WI is the probability that a dishonest node succeeds in building a blockchain of length i plus z plus 1 when it attempts to tamper with the transaction of the i block. And, and we derive that to be equal to uh, Q by P to the power of uh, Z plus 1, right? And uh, we also knew what uh, Q and P are. Uh, uh, P is the fraction of the compute controlled by honest nodes. And Q is the fraction of compute controlled by dishonest nodes. So of the overall uh, finite compute that is available, uh, the fraction of honest nodes is P and the fraction of dishonest nodes is Q. And uh, which means that P plus Q equals 1. And uh, with that, uh, we, we 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 found that you know as long as the network uh, uh, is in a state such that the majority of the compute is controlled by honest nodes, we saw that uh, you know uh, this probability is going to be negligible, especially when uh, z increases. That is. Uh, as as it as the dishonest node tries to revert a transaction in a block that is deeper in the blockchain, right? That is, that is uh, as z increases, right? It, it 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 means it is deeper because it it, it, it z has to be lo uh, a bigger number for uh, for it to be deep, right? So as long as it z increases, uh, we were able to quantify this particular probability. Uh, to go to a negligible value, and, and this is a sample. If, if you see here, right, uh, we, we took a scenario of uh, where uh, of a network where 20% uh, of the compute is controlled by uh, dishonest nodes and 80% is controlled by honest nodes. And when z is equal to one, uh, we found that you know, wi equals uh, 0 0.0625, but for z is equal to two, wi equates to suddenly drops to you know 0 0.015 and when z is 3 w even further drops down to 0 0.0039 right so what this means is that uh, for a dishonest node uh, as it goes deeper into the chain to tamper with the transaction and rebuild the chain it's going to have a harder time right in other words a dishonest node has the best chance uh, Though the probability is very less, it still has the best chance uh, to tamper with the transaction in its current node. That is when z is equal to one. Right. So what this means is that uh, let's let's be very clear here. So if, if I'm going to keep this, uh, if, I, if I'm going to drop uh, draw this blockchain somewhat like this, uh, and, and and let's say that you know uh, this is the most recent uh, block, right? The most recent block. Now, uh, what this means is that uh, the moment a node makes a transaction, it has the best chance of uh, succeeding uh, to tamper. If, if a dishonest node tries to tamper with, it has the best chance to succeed if it tries to tamper with it right away, right? Uh, because if the moment it loses it and uh, if that node tries to uh, tamper with a transaction on this particular block, now, after building another block, it means that the value of z is 2. And we know that, you know, uh, the value of the probability significantly drops as z increases. So, the best chance a node that is that intends to be dishonest uh, it has to succeed is to tamper with a transaction right away. 
the moment you give a money uh, to to another party and it gets broadcasted and it immediately tries to trans- uh, uh, revert that right so that that is what would simulate the scenario of z is equal to 1 for a dishonest node and that is the best chance that it that a dishonest node has right and uh, what can a uh, what can be a, a receiver of a transaction in that network adopt a strategy right see if 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 a dishonest node is going to try to do this immediately just give give the money and immediately tries to tamper with it uh, it might as well make sense um for the receiver of that money to wait uh, for some time to be absolutely sure that you know this the money that it has received is indeed you know intact and and uh, the sender has not you know made an attempt to take it back right so a receiver could make, could wait right uh, a reasonable strategy for the receiver of that transaction is to wait uh, for some time or in other words the receiver can wait for a few blocks to be created right after the transaction is made so that uh, it knows that you know after after even after a few blocks are created and the the if the money is still there then the receiver knows that yes you no know, the, the the sender has uh, you know is, is not going to, is mean sender is not going to succeed in tampering with it because there are already few blocks that are uh, uh, that are already built and the transaction is intact right so that is the strategy that the uh, receiver can uh, adopt so just just to be clear uh whenever uh, uh, just to paraphrase the whole thing every time a transaction every time a transaction is made by a particular uh, uh, every time a transaction is made um a receiver what of the receiver waits for z blocks right the receiver waits for z blocks uh, and only then it tries to make use of the money that it has received right that could that could potentially make it uh, you know uh, secure the receiver uh, so that uh, such that you know the, the the money cannot be taken away right so uh, what 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 is that uh, uh, what what is that value of z that the receiver will have to wait to be reasonably sure that you know the transaction cannot be tampered any more right that is what we are going to derive in this uh, uh, video right so to to get that so i i will just try to capture it here uh, and uh, no this, this is where we are, we are, we are trying to uh, uh, we are trying to call out the scenario wherein uh, you know a, a, a transaction is made here uh, by a party and uh, ye ye gives uh, 200 uh, whatever uh, ye gives the 200 uh, dollars to b in this and that transaction is present here and uh, b waits for z blocks b waits for z blocks uh before making use of this 200 dollars which means that after z blocks if if z uh, if b still finds 200 dollars in the wallet then it it can start to make use of it because you know the the probability of a trying to tamper with uh, with this, this is very negligible right as as the value of z increases it is going to become negligible so what is that right value of z is what we are going to uh, uh find out in this uh, uh in this video and in the subsequent videos now before that uh now we, we need to refresh our skills in probability a bit and uh, let's 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 talk about uh, you know few concepts on uh, probability and uh, and that that should set us as the base to you know, find this value of uh, z right so let's talk about probability let us consider the scenario of uh, uh, of a coin toss right so we have a coin uh, there is a head and a tail component to that coin and uh, let's say that you know the probability when when you when you toss the coin uh, the probability that you can get a head is p right and uh, the probability that you can get a tail is going to be 1 minus p right now given this uh let's say we we conduct a trial uh, which involves uh, you know uh, which involves uh, uh, tossing this coin five times right so you have you are you're going to toss this coin five times and uh, i want to find out the probability that 
I'll get a, I'll get one head in that exactly one head. I want to let, let's 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 see how we can calculate this. So what what is going to be the probability of getting uh, one head uh, in in uh, you know five uh, trials? Now in what all scenarios can you get uh, one head? You can have a scenario where uh, you know the you, you get a head the uh, first time, and then everything else is a tail. This is one scenario, or you get the head for the second time and you get a tail everywhere else, and or you get a head the uh, the third time and you get a tail the other two uh, times, or you get a head uh, the fourth time. and uh, tail everywhere else or you get a head for the fifth time alone right so these are the possible uh, um scenarios these are the possible uh, outcomes where uh, you will have uh, you know exactly one head you know uh, uh, in an experiment that has five trials in in a trial where you are going to toss the coin five times right now what is the what is the probability of this occurrence the probability of this occurrence is you know that you know the the first time the prob the probability of the head turning up is p and uh, let me use a different color so which means that uh, the probability of uh, let me move this one slightly here so we know that you know the probability of a head turning up is p and the probability of a tail turning up is 1 minus p so the total probability of this outcome uh, happening after the fifth trial is p times 1 minus p 4 to the power of 4 right so that is this probability what is the probability of this outcome it is the same right here also it is going to be uh, 1 minus p times p times 1 minus p the q right so which is still going to be p times uh, 1 minus p to the power of 4 what about this same right so you you might see that uh, the probability of uh, uh, one head uh, the probability of getting exactly one head is actually the sum of all this so which is equal to probability of getting one head is equal to 5 times p times 1 minus p to the power of 4 right now let, let let's try to find out in this in this whole thing uh, what is the probability that uh, you would get uh, two heads right so what is the probability that you are going to get two heads now we we can do the same thing um you can do the same thing and and which means that you know uh, the uh, the different possibilities here are you can get a head that a head tail 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 this can be one specific outcome or you can get uh, something like h t h t t or you can get something like h t t h t or you can get something like h t t t h right or you can get um t h h uh t h and 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 you can have quite a few uh, such uh, you know occurrences in fact if you if you really put all possible combinations such that you will only have uh, two heads always uh you will have uh, primarily 10 such uh, occurrences uh like uh, you know five like you here you had five different outcomes so for two heads you will find out that you know when you when you put out all these combinations you will find out that you will have uh, 10 different combinations and in all the 10 combinations uh the pro the probability of each outcome is going to be 10 times p square times uh, 1 minus p q right because you are going to have two heads so that is p squared and there is going to be three tails which is 1 minus 3 to the power of 3 right 
So the probability that you're going to get uh, exactly two heads is going to be equal to 10 times p squared times 1 minus p q. Right. Now, how do we generalize this? How do we generalize this? How do we, in fact, uh, when I say generalize this, uh, how do we uh, call, uh, equate the probability that you are going to get x heads in n trials? Right. So what is the probability that I am going to get exactly x heads in n trials? Right. So the formula is, this whole thing, right? This whole thing can be generalized as this formula, uh, which is, you know, ncx times p times x times 1 minus p times n minus x. So this is the formula. And, uh, and, and ncx uh, is, you know, uh, the number of ways that you can, I mean, how many... Uh, uh, the number of ways you can you can you can have x combinations from n. So you, 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 this can be equated to be uh, n factorial by n minus x factorial times x factorial times uh, p to the power of x times one minus p to the power of n minus x. Right. So this is your formula for. Uh, the pro to derive the probability of getting x heads in uh, n trials, and and what you, what what you are actually seeing here is what is called as the uh, binomial uh, distribution and probability. So, uh, given this, um, right? Uh, so, given this. Let's let's push the limits. Let's let's try to uh, let's, let's try to uh, extend this further. Now this means that you know uh, you have a coin toss, you have uh, which have, which involves n trials, and 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 we are trying to calculate the probability of getting uh, x heads, right? Now let's let's consider a scenario where uh, you know your n, the number of trials, goes to infinity. That is, your trial is not finite. I mean. You're going to have a large number of trials. Also, the probability of that event happening, uh, right, the probability of uh, getting a heads or whatsoever, tends to zero. The probability of that event happening is also going to uh, zero. So, given this, let let's see what what uh, what happens to this particular uh, uh, equation, right? So, let, let's try that out. So, in this case. Uh, uh, the binomial distribution. Uh, so, in fact, what, what we are trying to do is we are trying to see if we can, you know, refine this binomial uh, distribution for this scenario, wherein your number of trials is going to be uh, 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 infinity and and your probability tends to uh, zero. So, uh, to to get this uh, refined, let's let's introduce another uh, uh, variable called as uh, lambda, and lambda is going to be equal to uh, NP. Now, what this means is, what is the what is the uh, idea of lambda? Lambda is called as the expected value, expected value, or the mean. So, what this means is that, uh, say you you have. Uh, uh, you have a coin uh, that has, you know, uh, a 70 percentage of uh, heads. There's the value of P is 0 0.7, which means that there is a 70 percent chance that you will get a head. And uh, you make 10 trials. So, which means that, you know, in 10 trials, on average, you're going to get seven. Uh, you're going to get seven heads, right? So that is what lambda means. Lambda is nothing but the expected value uh, for that particular experiment, which is nothing, which is nothing but the number of trials times the probability, right? So let's let's keep this variable. Uh, this will come in handy as we refine this binomial uh, uh, distribution, right? So let's uh, try to you know um, let's try to get this uh, let's try to get the value uh, derived. So what what we're trying to do is you know we're trying to find when uh, limit when n tends to infinity, what is the value of 
n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial uh, times uh, p power x times 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. Right. So this is what uh, we, have, we want to calculate. Right. So yeah, there is some uh, lag here. Uh, so what I've actually stated here is uh, this entire equation, and I've added this limit n tends to infinity. Right. So this is what I've tried to uh, capture here. Now let's start deriving this. Now we can restate this whole thing as uh, we can we'll we'll make use of uh, the value lambda here. So which means that this whole thing equates to uh, uh, n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial times you can write uh, uh, p as uh, lambda over n. All right. So we'll we'll write p as lambda over n times x. And uh, we can also write 1 minus p by the 1 minus lambda over n times n minus x. Right. So this is the this is the first step. Now our our point is uh, uh, our point is you know we we are trying to find when n tends to infinity. Right. So that that is that is what uh, we are trying to uh, capture here. So which means that. Uh, uh, this whole thing. Um, so in fact, I have to write it. The, the better way to write this is uh, limit n tends to uh, infinity. Uh, sorry, limit n tends to infinity. Yeah. So now. Because we are looking at you know n uh, n tending to infinity, we, we can bring the other constants outside of this. So the constants are primarily going to be your uh, lambda to the power of x and x factorial. These are all free of uh, n, so we can bring them outside of this. So which means that uh, I can write it as uh, lambda per x divided by x factorial. Then I'll have limit n tends to infinity. N factorial divided by n minus x factorial times uh, uh, one over n times x uh, one over times x times uh, one minus lambda by n times n minus x. Right? Yeah. So let's let's start. Uh, uh, expanding this part, let's let's try to expand this part, right? Now, what this uh, just just this part? Let's let's try to uh, expand. Now, you you you, you can call it as uh, you know this, this whole thing can be expanded as. Let me use a different color only for this. This whole thing can be expanded as n times n minus one times n minus two times you know n minus uh, x plus one times uh, n minus x factorial divided by n minus x factorial divided by n to the power of x. So basically, I have split this into two parts. N factorial is now split into two parts. I have just split all the components until n minus x plus one, and then I have just after that I have just taken it as n minus x factorial. The denominator I have just retained it as the same. N minus x factorial is retained as that, and n power x is retained as this. Now with this, you know that you know we can cancel out this part, and. Uh, what this means is that uh, you uh, this, this entire thing is, is going to be uh, uh, can can actually be retained as uh, uh, n minus n by n into n minus one by n into n minus two by n times uh, n minus x plus one by n, right? Now. 
we know that you know uh, this whole thing uh, because you know we are looking at n tending to infinity which means that this entire uh, thing infinity minus 1 is going to be negligible over over infinity that can be that's almost equal to 1 and same as the case which is n minus 2 by n will also be approximately equal to 1 because it's, it's going to be as good as you know a large number by large number and 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 same as the case all throughout right so when n tends to infinity this whole thing can become just 1 right so this is nothing but 1 now what this means is that your your this, this entire thing has become 1 now so your whole equation can now be stated as lambda per x by x factorial times uh, your limit n tending to infinity is now uh just 1 minus lambda over n times n minus x right so it it is actually uh, reduced to this part now let's let's split this part now. Let's let's split uh, this n minus x into two parts. So it is equal to lambda per x by x factorial limit n tending to infinity, which is one minus lambda over n times n times one minus lambda over n times minus x. Right. So I've, I, I've just uh, split. Uh, uh these two uh, parts here right uh, one one minus uh, lambda per n uh, by 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 this one yeah so now given this uh let, let's let's try to you know simplify this here now you just you just take this part uh let's once again you know let let's try to expand uh, uh this one here and then i'm just taking uh, you know this part first now in this you know that you know as uh, similar to the earlier one as n tends to infinity uh, what happens is that you know when 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 n value becomes uh, infinity and and it is to the power of you know minus x so there is no value of you know n here right so this is also a small number so as n tends to infinity this part this this part also becomes uh, Uh, equal to uh, this, this whole thing becomes equal to uh, no, zero because uh, uh, it, it, this 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 fraction becomes negligible so this becomes one minus a very small value which is as good as one and uh, and this value is also you know uh, a small value here so this this whole thing can be uh, equated to uh, uh, one here right so this is approximately equal to uh, one so which means that uh, your value of uh, this this whole expression has now become lambda per x by x factorial limit n tending to infinity to the power of 1 minus lambda over n times uh, n here right now we have to simplify uh, this part here we'll have to we'll have to find what this one is and and then we are done okay but before we get there uh, I, i want to talk about one uh, specific uh, one special function um and and let me use a different color for that uh, uh let, let's try to plot uh, this equation um let's t- let, let's take a simple example of you know 1 plus uh, 1 over x times uh, x so i want you to think about uh, no i want you to try uh, plotting this particular uh, equation on a graph right so if you consider a equation like you know y is equal to 1 plus 1 over x by x and uh, if you if you try to keep plotting this when x goes to infinity right which means that you know on on a graph if you if you plot this value uh, this is x and this is y if you if you try to plot uh, this value uh, as uh, x tends to you know infinity what you will observe is that the the value that the graph is likely going to be somewhat like this in a way that uh, as x tends to infinity as x tends to infinity it is going to come close to a value 
around you know 2.7 approximately you're right your 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 y value is going to approximately come to 2.7 and that is what is called the euler's number right e so what what we mean by that is uh, when when uh, uh, when x tends to infinity your value of you know 1 plus 1 over x is nothing but e right so this is actually e so similarly i want you to try one more uh, equation uh, if you see uh one you to try one more equation which is you know y is equal to 1 minus 1 over x to the power of minus x right even here uh, when when you try to plot this equation on on a graph like this so this is your x and this is your y when you try to plot this equation this equation is also going to somewhat you know land some somewhere like this and here again you will you will find that uh, you know this value uh, which is 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 going to be somewhat like 2.7 which means that you know your limit of uh, x tending to infinity the power of 1 minus 1 over x to the power of minus x is also equal to e right so you, you can try this or you can try plotting this value uh, and this for large numbers and you will see that both will tend to come close to 2.7 to the euler number which is which is e right so which it also means that you know we are going to make use of this here uh, but before that i want to also make use of one thing uh, uh, what 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 would it be see if if limit of uh, Let let let's just take this equation and and you know what what I'm going to do now is going to be valid here as well. Uh, if you know that you know limit of uh, x tending to infinity of one minus one over x to the power of minus x is equal to e, right? Now, uh, given this, uh, what would be the value of uh, limit x? tending to uh, infinity to the power of 1 minus uh, 1 over x times uh, minus x and uh, to the whole to the power of uh, n maybe whole to the power of something like uh, you know t what will the value of the v t is a constant here and uh, we are only talking about you know x tending to infinity so this whole thing is going to be equal to limit of x tending to infinity of uh, 1 minus 1 over x times minus x times uh, t uh, which is equal to e to the power of uh, t right so in a sense uh, what 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 we are talking about is uh, you know this, this this whole thing uh to the power of another value uh, is, is going to be e to the power of that uh, value here so we let's, let's let's keep make note of this and and we'll be using that in 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 our uh, equation here now you, you might you might see something like you know uh, you might see or uh, you might already see a similarity uh, uh, here uh with this equation uh and uh, the one that we just uh, uh derived here right so let let's try to get this exactly uh, to this equation so given that this is going to be equal to lambda to the power of x by x factorial times you know the limit of uh, n tending to infinity now here uh, i'm going to re, uh, rewrite this a bit so let's call this as 1 minus 1 by n by lambda right i'm going to call it this way to the power of uh, instead of n what i'm going to write this as is minus n over lambda times minus lambda 
So I have written the same thing here, but uh, all what I've done here is I brought this lambda down here, and it has become you know n by lambda in the denominator. And uh, in the power, I have uh, have multiplied and uh, divided by minus lambda on both the sides, right? On both the numerator and the denominator here. Uh, so this is exactly the same. Now, if you see here, this this whole thing is the same as right the limit uh, limit of x tending to infinity of 1 minus 1 over x to the power of minus x is what i have actually got in here and at least until this part so this whole thing uh, uh, as n tends to uh, uh, infinity we know that you know this this whole equation can is nothing but e right this whole thing has become e and uh, which can now be uh, rewritten as uh x to the sorry it's going to be a uh, lambda to the power of x by x factorial times e to the power of minus lambda right so the whole equation has now gotten uh, simplified to uh lambda to the power of x over uh, x factorial times uh e to the power of minus lambda right so that that is what this whole uh, equation has now got in uh, simplified to right now uh, this is what is called the uh, poisson uh, distribution uh, poisson distribution uh, is is uh, uh, happens when you uh, know uh, when when your binomial I mean, binomial distribution tends to become uh, tends to poisson distribution uh when uh, the number of trials come become close to infinity and when the probability comes close to zero that that that's when you know your binomial distribution uh, becomes poisson uh, uh, poisson distribution so let's quickly capture that here so this is what is your uh, poisson distribution uh um, the probability that uh, you're going to get x heads right the probability that you're going to get x heads in n trials when uh, when your uh, when when n tends to infinity you know becomes your uh, poisson distribution here so we're going to make use of this in the next video uh, in the, in the context of blockchain and uh, we will we will we'll, uh, we'll see how uh, you know we will we'll, these come into play to uh, uh to find out uh, the number of uh, blocks a receiver would have to wait right before it uh, confirms on 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 that uh, uh, receipt of that money right so we are going to make use of the poisson distribution and all that to the right that so see you all in the next video thanks if you like the content that you have watched uh, please do like share and subscribe this uh, with your friends thank you